The south of England is surrounded by rich, shallow seas and estuaries, and home to a variety of productive marine habitats. Sand and mudflats give way to emerald green seagrass meadows and carpets of pink coralline merle. These environments provide nursery grounds, food and shelter for young fish and marine life. They help to protect coastlines from erosion by taking power out of the waves and also help clean the surrounding seawater by catching particles. As the tide recedes, the mud and sand become rich feeding grounds for both migrant and resident birds. All of these habitats draw down carbon from the atmosphere, making them important for maintaining a stable climate. Existing in sheltered areas along our coastlines means these habitats often come into close contact with our industrial and recreational activities, which can put them under intense pressures, damaging their fragile ecosystems. To help protect our precious seabed habitats and the wildlife that relies on them, the Life Recreation Remedies Project was established. Co-funded by the EU LIFE programme and led by Natural England, this four-year marine conservation partnership adopted a range of strategies to help protect our seabed habitats and their wildlife into the future. Remedies works in five special areas of conservation and we chose these areas because the seagrass and merl beds present in them are in unfavourable condition and this is due to damage and loss over the years. All of the five sacks that we work in are also really booming with industry and recreational use and so if not managed properly, they can impact on those kind of beds. Seagrass in particular is really vulnerable to damage as a habitat. You've got climate change, so increased ocean temperatures and ocean acidity can be detrimental to seagrass beds. Things like storm events can rip up seagrass beds and wash it on shore. You've also got nutrient excess, runoff from the land can lead to a lot of algal blooms, and these kind of smother the seagrass and block out the sunlight so that it can't grow as well. And you've also got things like anchoring and moorings. So when the tide goes out and the riser rests on the seafloor, this can scour a mark around it and stops the seagrass bed growing to its full extent. One of the key elements for any project like Remedies is monitoring and research. And this gives us a basis and establishes the evidence and data that we need to be able to go and do our work. So we go and we measure different things like the quality and the extent of our seagrass beds. And the other key type of monitoring we do is recreational activity surveys. This allows us to establish any areas that might be more problematic than others where we might need to put different types of management in. Today we're surveying the seagrass beds out at Corsand and possibly at Drake's Island as well. So what we're doing there is trying to assess the condition of the seagrass beds, counting the number of plants within a 50 centimetre by 50 centimetre square, and also collecting samples as well to check on the health of the seagrass beds. And what we're doing is we're comparing the results from the surveys from 2018 to give an overall indication of the condition of the seagrass beds and the subtitled sandbanks within Plymouth Sand and Estuary's Special Area of Conservation. Natural England, our job is all about recovering nature, restoring nature and connecting people with nature. And of course that's exactly what the Remedies Project is all about. Making sure we've got sustainable, resilient marine systems that people can continue to enjoy. The second part of Remedies work is protecting our seabed habitats. This is done by managing access, raising awareness and installing environmentally friendly boat moorings or AMS. AMS are advanced mooring systems and we call them that because they take the pressure off the seabed whilst allowing mariners to have a secure anchor. This is either done by a bungee system or by floats that the boat attaches to. The abrasion of those chains is completely removed, releasing the seabed from that threat to it. So we originally installed the five moorings that we've been monitoring since 2019. We recorded the density and length of seagrass around those moorings every six months. But in May this year, 2023, we saw a 221% increase in seagrass density and an increase in average laid length. We also want to continue seeing what the recovery at Corsan might be and widen our influence with yacht clubs and mariners around the country. Next we have voluntary no anchor zones and these are how we're managing access to certain areas where certain damage happening due to the anchoring process. And so what we've done in these circumstances, if we've gone to the local communities, we've gone into the sailing clubs and we've presented the data and evidence that we've found as to why there might need a management measure. 
And these voluntary numeric zones, we put in marker buoys to outline the area, and this gives the boaters all the information to make an informed choice about where to anchor. And going out and having those conversations has actually made the process way more successful. People are really on board with it, they've explained their local knowledge to us so that we can really determine the best way to put the marker boys out and the best signage to use to actually convey our message properly to people. So we're here at the Southampton Boat Show um, and the Green Blue has a stand and we're welcoming visitors to talk about how they can be more sustainable boaters in general. But we're also here as part of the Remedies project to explain to boat users where seagrass is in their local waters, what they can do in terms of more sustainable anchoring best practice. And we have a life-size advanced mooring system on the stand for visitors to come and actually have a look at it. Because most of the time, a lot of these things are under the water, out of sight. We have an expert seagrass panel happening and it's going to allow the audience to come and watch and listen to find out all the fantastic work that these projects are doing to help protect seagrass through restoration, but then also be able to give information to the audience on what they can do when they're out on the water doing their boating activities. A lot of recreational boaters didn't realise about the array of sensitive seabed habitats we have along our coastline in England. They're now understanding more about seagrass, why it's important, and they can make an educated choice now to anchor outside of those areas and adopt better practice. Active restoration is the next element of Remedy's work, with the aim of expanding seagrass meadows that have been damaged or lost. The Ocean Conservation Trust are working in the Solent Maritime and Plymouth Sound special areas of conservation and are aiming to plant eight hectares of seagrass by using new methods and innovative technologies. We have to firstly identify areas that are healthy and where we can collect seagrass seeds. We send divers down, collect those seeds, clean them, look after them, and then within the lab conditions that we've created that are the ideal growing conditions for them, we try to nurture that growth from these, uh, these tiny little seedlings. Once we've collected the seeds, we're able to put them into this state-of-the-art lab that we have at the aquarium. That's nine large tanks that can hold 100 pillows and in each pillow we can plant 100 seeds. So we're able to take a huge number of plantlets and grow them into adults. And then as we've started to move them out into the sea, we've seen a really incredible success. It's so great to dive on now because you can go down and see the pillows and then you can see an increase of seagrass everywhere. The remaining element is education and outreach. By engaging with local communities, schools, water users and citizen scientists, they aim to generate awareness of our seabed habitats and inspire action to help protect them. I manage the education programme from designing the workshops and engagement talks to spreading the word about the project work, what we're doing and why it's so important. Today was an outreach event with our home educator community. They came out on the boat trip to see our restoration site and get involved with a few activities from plankton trawls uh, to looking at some animals that exist in those seagrass meadows by pulling them up, having a little look at the lobster pot. And what that's done is built their passion for what they've learnt about and hopefully encourage them to go on and discover more. The essential part of it though is that these young people are going to be the future conservationists of tomorrow. Sea Search is a brilliant national project. We've got volunteer divers all around the British Isles. And thanks to the Remedies project, we've been able to lead lots of really great dive expeditions, investigating the health of our seabeds. And we've been doing what we can to shout about all of our amazing wildlife. There's been lots on social media and some great reports written. So hopefully that's all making a difference. I think Remedy is a really good example of how it's brought together different organisations with one common aim. In Plymouth we're exploring how we can develop partnerships with other statutory bodies, with other local councils and with individual communities. We have told so many people about what we're doing and lots of them are more cautious of going out to sea and also just generally more aware of seagrass. So I hope that that carries on, but also that we are able to replicate this work through other projects. 2024 marks the end of the Remedies project, the culmination of four years of hard and valuable work. The project surveyed many seagrass and mural habitats along the south coast and the recreational activities affecting them. The data gathered has helped to communicate critical issues to stakeholders and water users showing a real need for protection. 
voluntary no anchor zones and advanced mooring systems were installed and close monitoring showed promising seabed recovery. New seagrass restoration techniques are helping damaged areas of the seabed recover as part of England's largest seagrass planting effort. The Remedies project will leave a lasting legacy that helps to ensure clean and healthy seas and a long-term future for the precious habitats and wildlife that call them home.